Hey, it is your buddy Peace and Harmony with you here today. Much love going out to all the beautiful empowered harmonizers. We are zooming in and focusing in today on tackling a great set of viewer questions, kind of a, a, a very popular question and response I get and sort of a, a people on both sides of the fence, both sides of the seesaw, both sides of the equation is about how to expose or confront a narcissist. How do you deal with confronting a spouse, perhaps that you have been married to for 20, 25, 26 years, and you're just now becoming aware of the imbalance in the relationship, the manipulation in the relationship. The cause has created the effect of the tension, the, the unhappiness, the unfulfillment, the fact that you allowed certain things to be ignored, uh, festered, are now festering up or swept under the rug. You're not getting your needs met. You're not being backed up. You're not being supported. This might also be as part of a realization in your workplace or your family system where you're finding that you're constantly getting treated as the poor man out, the weak man out, the weak woman in the corner, the weak one of the bunch or the meek one. We don't want to say weak. We want to say the way that you are treated or projected onto. And how do you expose or break the pattern of this dysfunctional system? The problem is to understand how deeply ingrained it is in you and you are feeling as you relate to these types of people. Some people encounter narcissists in small quantities. Some people on who are viewers encounter them in large quantities. And oftentimes, and not, it's not oftentimes the quantity, it is the quality or the extent or severity of these personality types, dysfunctions, and where they are on the spectrum. We also have a lot of viewers who are dealing with people who are psychopathic, people who have no conscience. They are really, you know, just as a kind of a quick recap, and you can understand where this settles in your own life, whether this person is a covert narcissist or a psychopath, a, a narcissist basically is operating with a very pathological sense of self-importance. They are acting with a really big, fluffed up, puffed up ego that they are better than, superior than, and have an entitlement sort of pro, you know, proposition to the way they enter into relationships. They're not just leaders. They're not just sort of charismatic. These people are insinuating then or very dismissive of others, others' qualities, others' strengths, others' viewpoints, opinions, or input. They basically operate to shut others out. And shutting others out means minimizing and being dismissive or ignoring of. Treating you as if you are a second-class citizen, a second-rate human being, third-rate, a hundredth-rate. Even if these people are in your work environment where there should be a protocol or a policy of fair treatment of others and positive regard and you know treating others with respect, Oftentimes, this is not the, 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 the situation. Oftentimes, people find themselves at the butt of people's jokes. They are the object of contempt or what I call negative water, water cooler effect, where people tend to then cloister over into little cliques and then tend to talk bad about oftentimes the producer, the good person, the nerd, the one with the heart, the one with the integrity. Oftentimes, these people, because out of jealousy, they tend to sabotage and create a smear campaign against those people who are the top producers, the quality people who don't engage in this. So we're looking at to understand that how these people interact with different types and who they target and who they make vulnerable. So you can get that in work environments. You can get that in um, marriages. You can also get that in family systems. Family systems that are plagued with people who are trying to be, you know, the alpha sister, the alpha brother, the alpha sister-in-law, the alpha brother-in-law, the person who tries to promulgate that they are the center of attention. They are opportunists. They try to seize 
opportunity, events, when there's a death in the family, a marriage in the, um, in the family. There, there's a, a, a need for control, manipulation, and power. These are the people who want to um, have initiative, are over-assertive, um, tend to take command or try to take control over situations, try to work to corral people into uh, settings, pictures, email groups, etc. It depends on where you're at in the spectrum. Or this people could, you know, only, um, you know, the, this might be a step, a step daughter or a step son who, you know, they're taking their opportunists and they're, they're taking from energy attention from the family and trying to corral it, uh, I'm sorry, uh, corral it onto their family. There is a favoritism going on. Favoritism will destroy families and work environments. That's not how it's supposed to be played. But if you get enough people on board, you've got this narcissistic tendency and pattern going on strong. And when this happens, it's very difficult to break the cycle. Depending on how long it's been going on and the extent to which the players are involved, this can be very painful and very traumatic uh, to try to cope and expose. How do you communicate with people who are very severe, strong, or malignant in this personality, quality, or trait of a narcissist? As well as someone who is psychopathic. Someone perhaps who does not have a conscience. So it's causing them to really exploit other people and situations. We are talking about exploitation, taking advantage of, seizing opportunity to hurt, trigger, and promulgate splitting behavior in an organization or a family. This is a textbook situation or behavior that a psychopath will use to try to separate and segregate out specific people or groups of people and then make them the object of content to try to raise or elevate their power or furthermore, usually to get something that they want. They might want an office, they might want money, they might want contacts, they might just want to be the center of the attention or have that psychopathic charisma distort, contort, and then sort of mislead and misguide the ethos or pathos of an organization or a family. This is very sad and scary when it happens because these people who are either malignant, narcissistic, or psychopathic, they don't think, they don't have a heart, they don't have compassion or empathy like the rest of the population. It allows them to do certain things that most people would not feel comfortable doing. It allows them to break bonds, to break ties, to violate others and their boundaries to get what they want. So where most people would not go, these people would then transcend the boundaries or protocol or policy or you know uh, social psychological sort of unwritten laws like you know love your brother, love your sister, um, look out for your family. You know, they break these sacred ties or what you would think would be ingrained harmonious relationships. Even in the workplace, you see it even more pronounced. These people who go up against the boss, they go up against the rules or protocol. They're, you know, straddling the fence. They're getting the context or doing things. You know, there might be um, harassment issues going on. You know, and it's just like, you know, and then it is an ultimate distraction. Do you see how it is distracting out of your goodness, your productivity, your focus? And then you have to be constantly on guard, you know, on the lookout for this person. And it's just like, oh my God, this is running rampant. How do you get this mediated? How do you expose? How do you communicate in oftentimes these very volatile situations? Well, it is to understand that there are specific things that these people want, namely power and attention. They engage in high risk behaviors. High risk meaning that they are able um, and comfortable to try to, it is what they can get away with. So you have to understand sort of the motivations of these people and to call them out. Yes, to expose them and really to get um, them to get them leveled out, um, to take away their power, to take, you know, 
the, the quiver out of their bow and arrow so that they can't fling anything against you. These people do not like to look bad. They oftentimes also, um, people might feel they dislike confrontation or what I call carefrontation. We are able to expose them. You might have this building up like a long period of time, like a power keg. You might have this so built up that you don't, you're, you're like a deer in headlights. You cannot confront them. You're not comfortable speaking the words. You're not comfortable um, addressing them. When you expose a narcissist or a psychopath, you unequivocally need to do this and get them really where it hurts. You need to communicate and speak your fears out of existence. You need to unequivocally declare that you will not tolerate this trans, this trespassing of yourself and your family. You need to unequivocally say that you are not happy with their behavior. And you need to identify the people, the key players, if you're going to communicate them, you're going to break and sever this treatment. You are unequivocally going to communicate that a specific action or attitude that they are exhibiting is not welcome, it is not tolerated, and you don't need to come across as, you know, irritated by them, but you come across from a space of conviction, neutrality, dispassionate, and most importantly, that no matter what, you are not worried about the consequences of your exposing them. You are not worried about what their future actions are going to be. You don't have a care in the world about how it is received. Once you let go of the outcome, you get what you want. You get the freedom you get the change of energy. And also, not only do you feel wonderful, healed, strong, and relieved of the burden that has been holding you back, the you know the lack of ability to confront, you need to have specific things in your corner. You need to have conviction. You need to have faith. But unequivocally, you need to have the facts. You need to identify the fact that this has gone on too long and that this is no longer tolerated. And you can exhibit this through five to 15 words of confronting this individual, what I call care fronting, or specifically stating that this cannot go on, that this is not accepted, this is not permitted. So for example, let's just, um, for example, someone is uh, being very dismissive of you in family gatherings or work gatherings. They're not giving you the floor. They're not listening to your words. The things that you bring up are sort of, you know, shoulders out, edged out, or downplayed or dismissed, or they're criticized. And these are valid, very valid points. You need to speak your fears. You need to break that tension. You need to break that cycle. And you need to speak your awareness to them in order to disengage it. So you have to like disengage the lack or the barrier or the fear. Um, so for example, um, and this is, we're gonna do another example here in a moment where it's even more severe where you need to go no contact. But for example, you know, this is either in the workplace or a family gathering. I know you guys are, you know, you need to speak the result that you always see. You need to speak the fear that you always experience. You need to speak this. So even if it's on, and you need to get the verbiage correct, whether it's um, non-inclusiveness, you need to speak these words of what the problem is. You need to identify the problem. You need to, you know, the fact that this person is either neglecting you or neglecting a child or they're enmeshed. You need to speak this secret, the family secrets. You need to get them out. Otherwise, they tend to fester and become a trigger for you. A trigger, if you identify it, is nothing more than an uncomfortable, unfair event that you, that you experienced in your past that's like a trauma imprint and like an anchor to you. It's holding you connected 
through years and decades, like an energetic anchor, like an eye, like a piece of iron that would, you know, land a boat in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean that's going 200 feet down. So you need to visualize this anchor. You need to identify when this first started. For most people, this occurred in their childhood when they were, you know, told that their feelings didn't matter. They were told that this, a man should just put up and shut up. When you were told that, you know, you know, you are just the girl in the bunch and you, this is just how it has to be. You were not validated. You were not recognized. Your feelings were not listened to and validated and worked through and you were not protected in those situations. You went unprotected. So the shield of numbing had to take place, making you smaller and smaller or quieter and quieter, not able to become used to or have a, a new fresh imprint psychologically with how to ident you know, communicate this and stand up for yourself and um, you know, basically knock knock it out from, you know, and get it in the butt. You know, knock it out and crush it as it happens. So it is to understand and visualize how far back this has gone and you need literally need to speak light into this anchor. You literally need to see it like an iron rod but infusing your own energetic truth through that. So that's how you get your passion up. That's how you get your ha your your happiness up. You get your enthusiasm and your actual sort of vital energy back, which eliminates the fear. So you need to understand the cause that's created this effect and to see where it originally started because it did start somewhere. You weren't just born into this existence and this earth plane with this feeling of trepidation and fear and that you can't communicate. You were taught this along with these people and this group in this inner circle way back when. So for people, it you know, there's a certain group of players, there's a certain time it happened, and there's a certain time where it was promulgated or reinforced, and that's what you have reinforced and rememorized in your cellular biology and your neurochemistry, and then thus your communication ability, your your language centers, your vision centers, your touch centers, your, you know, your taste centers, everything is connected. So it is to understand and visualize when this took place and to, and to send light to it, meaning I'm sending my truth to the core that's created this effect. I'm sending my life energy, my passion into the cause that's created this effect. I'm sending my own self-love where nobody else loved me. I'm sending my own personal self-love into this event that's created this effect. I'm sending rescue energy, my own love light rescue energy into the cause that's created this effect. I'm sending it there now and so it is and it is blasting it out. It's blasting out that negativity. I am sending my life energy. It is a it is a self-preservation life energy. You might uh, call it chi. You might, you know, you might call it passion. You might call it light. You might cause it, you know, call it um, uh, uh, preservation. You might call it enthusiasm. You might call it survival. But you are sending that energy, and you might need to get amped up. This is where some people need to get a little bit angry, you know, and not stay stuck in the anger. But the anger is saying enough is enough. And oftentimes, a lot of people aren't comfortable being animated or angry or aggressive or assertive in these times. If you're used to ignoring it, you are used to living in denial and numbing it out, like sending a anesthesia, emotional anesthesia into these events where you're just silent, 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 put up, put up, put up, tolerate, tolerate, tolerate. So it's to understand unequivocally that you need to work through this cause has created this effect. You need to go there for yourself. You're worth it. Like L'Oreal says, you're worth it. You deserve it or whatever their tagline is. You deserve it. You deserve to be rescued and saved in this situation. And you're like going there with your hands and you're pulling yourself up into the biggest heart of hearts, the holiest of holiest, the sublime energy that is there to save you. So this is your life lesson. And you need, this is the lesson that you need to kind of transform and alchemize your energy 
that is helping you to basically save that inner child, that inner wounded victim, wherever it occurred in your life. You're going there and embracing it. You're saying, I've got this. I've got this. I've got you and I've got this now. And then the assertiveness begins with speaking your fears and exposing them. And, oh, well, I don't want to do that. This is going to cause a lot of trouble. Well, hasn't enough trouble already be caused for you in your life? Haven't you suffered enough? If you haven't suffered enough, then say, you know what? I'm just going to ignore this and I'm going to continue suffering. And my life is going to be nothing but a tug of war internally. And I will take this to my grave. Or you can say, unequivocally, peace and harmony, I have decided enough is enough. No matter what, I'm going to jump because the net will catch me. This is like your own, um, you know, pre 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 um, preservation energy. Um, like some experts say, you have to want it as if your head is being put under a faucet and you're gasping for life. You're, ga you're gasping for oxygen. You have to want it that bad. You have to know it that bad. You have to know unequivocally um, where this has um, set, been set up and then release it. And it is a permission-based releasing. But furthermore, not only is it permission-based, but how do you confront it? How do you speak the words of exposure? It is. It comes with a feeling state. So it, be, it has to begin with a feeling state where you know it is a KNO state. Okay, where you know you needed to be protected. You know you went too far. You know you, you went over the edge. You know that this situation promulgated and caused some rifts, some problems, some uh, fights, some financial issues. It's caused some employment issues. Um, things got ugly or things are not where you want in your life and you're really in a bad space. You have to know unequivocally and own through a rigorous honesty this is what happened, and this is how I reacted, and this is how I handled it, and these were my coping me mechanisms. These were my defense mechanisms. You need to put language, correct language, to the events. You need to say, this was gaslighting. This was sabotaging. This was scapegoating. This was a smear campaign. This is negative water cooler talk. I will not take on that negativity. And this is what we call exposing or doing the shadow work. It's unearthing it out of the subconscious and making it conscious and being okay with it and being safe with it and saying, you know, I am so done with this. So it's just like quitting a job that unequivocally is causing you to live a lie or be unhappy or is causing you to be in a state where you're feeling inauthentic. You're just like, this is like really weird um, I don't want to, I don't want to go on like this. There's like this tension. You need to speak into existence, not only what you do not tolerate, but also you have to advise what you want. So you have to communicate this. If you are being ignored, if you are being, you know, shut out, if you are being, in, you know, not included either in the work environment or your home environment, your family environment, you unequivocally need to expose this. You unequivocally need to speak the unfairness as, the, as well as what you want. And you need to speak it um, and basically take the quiver out of their pouch or whatever it is and speak, you know what, um, it seems, you know, with you, uh, the way our the situation always goes, no matter what I do, um, this is always shut down. Um, this is always dismissed. My ideas are not taken seriously and I'm done with being the scapegoat here. I'm, I'm done with being the, the meek one out. I'm done with being dismissed through the phone calls and you need to speak and say, I am done with this and you need to cut it off. You need to have a clean break. It might be, you know, an angle, it might be an angle where you're up, but you unequivocally need to address this specifically at the core and identify that you know where the core and saying, I'm done being the scapegoat. I am done being, you know, the one in the corner. I am done being the nerd. I'm done, you know, being shut out. Um, you need to speak not only 
what they're doing, but how you feel as well. And that isn't the second part of the equation. So you need to, you need to confront and you need to use the right language and you need to expose them for the unfair or what, or the, the intolerable or unethical action it, it is, no matter what the, and you can't be afraid of the outcome. So for example, I'm done being stonewalled. You know, I'm done being mimicked. Um, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm taking this to a new level. Um, you know, I'm, and then take it to the next level. And so, and I will not tolerate this. This isn't flying here. Um, this won't work. This pattern will not work. This system, this doesn't work. Um, I feel an inequality here. I feel an injustice here. I feel an unfairness here. It doesn't make you weak for speaking the truth. It makes you empowered and it helps you to bust through the tension. You know, this cloistering up and um, this, um, uh, what do you call it when people just get into little groups? Um, uh, the, the term is eluding me here, bear with me one moment. Um, when people get into like little clicks, um, the clickiness, you know, this is, this is not working. This is not a functional system, um, because it's shutting out where there should be welcoming. You know, you're shutting out where there should be welcoming. Now in, in certain, uh, you know, employment industries, there's going to be, um, little clicks and groups, and that's just how it's going to be. It's going to be that way. There's going to be people with certain ages that get together, certain backgrounds, certain interests. You know, there's going to be the, the drinking group. There's going to be uh, the IT group. There's going to be the party group. There's going to be the dance group. There's going to be little clicks that form. This is what it is. Your perception, though, you have to understand that you know, it, it is what it is and not perceive yourself as odd or undesirable or unattractive. It is what it is. But if it is a group that you feel you deserve to be included in or actually need to be included in, if it's in like a close family, you know, situation, you know, where it's really obvious that they're being hurtful or talking smack or feeling smack or whatever it is, then you unequivocally need to break into that group. Um, and you need to unequivocally say how you feel and then how you want to be feel, how you want to be treated and how you want to feel. Hey guys, you know, this, this won't work. Hey guys, you know, I can't have this. This is not um, a comfortable way to work. This is not a comfortable way to have a functioning family. Um, I know that you're busy. I know that you guys have a lot of this in common. However, I know that you have, you know, a lot going, however, and then you then state your place. You state your space. We, you know, we need fairness here though. We need responsiveness here though. And then you speak what you need and it, it has to come from that true raw place. I deserve respect. I, you know, and then, so do you understand the dynamic? You have to speak what you won't tolerate and what it is that you're being mistreated as singled out. Okay. And that you will not tolerate it. And then furthermore stating what it is you want and what it is that should be in its place as in order to function. And then unequivocally make your needs known. And when you tell, when you refuse to be treated and then you withdraw your attention, and you unequivocally aren't worried about the outcome, then either, you know, they will change their tune. If they are good hearted people, they will change their tune and they will change how they relate to you. Once you speak up and make known how it is that you want to be treated, you know, you know, I, we need inclusiveness here. We need openness here. We need receptivity here. I know that you're busy. However, we need receptivity here. I know that, you know, you're super important. However, we need receptivity here. I know you have ideas. Um, however, you know, I have input as well. You need to call that out and expose it and then create your place, create a presence, sort of break through that pattern.
you might need to rehearse this and practice this a couple times. This You might need to kind of focus on this and get a vision of what it will look like. You know, I know your viewpoints are, you know, um, are all out there. However, I have input as well. So it's, you know, acknowledging and validating and then acknowledging and validating yourself. Acknowledging and validating and acknowledging and validating yourself. And coming from unequivocally a space of certainty and knowing and a state of confidence. Confidence meaning you're not worried about the outcome because you've got truth on your side and it will carry the weight and it will carry the power and it will liberate you tremendously once you practice and rehearse this. It's your buddy, peace and harmony. You can do this. You have definitely got this. Please, I hope these videos do help and please share and please subscribe for more great tools, videos, discussion, and support. Peace out. Love you.